My name is Neil Malik from Knack Training, and in today's Everyday Office video, I'm going to show you how to create what are called either dependent or cascading drop-down menus. Now, the core of this is relatively easy to understand. If you hit one drop-down menu, let's say the drop-down menu associated with the type of beverage you're interested in, and you choose, for example, that you're interested in an alcoholic beverage, then from there, you should see that uh, there is a list of possible beverages that are alcoholic, right? So it would be great if the second drop-down menu then had only those items that were in that list. And so you can see here, this drop-down menu automatically shows me different options that are in the alcoholic portion list. Now, once you choose a specific option from within there, if there are multiple different sizes of a particular beverage, then we want to be able to see those sizes on the drop-down menu. And as you can see here with the alcoholic beverage Budweiser specifically, there's only one beverage size. But if I were to switch over to sodas, and I were to switch over to Coca-Cola, for example, you can see here there are three different sizes of Coca-Cola available for purchase. And so on the beverage size drop-down menu, the same three options are here on the drop-down. So how did I make this happen? And uh, what can we do to set ourselves up for success? Now, the first thing I'll do is I'll get rid of the existing drop-down menus. These were all done using a tool called data validation. So I'm going to go to my data tab, click on data validation, and clear the settings as they stand right now. And then just go ahead and remove this. Okay, so as you can see over on the left, for my three levels of drop-down menus, I've created three tables. And those three tables have at first just the list of beverage types, then a table that has every beverage type and they're arranged by beverage type, and then the brands that are within each of those types. And then over to the right from that, we have the different types. And if you look at any individual type, again, they're all grouped together so that then you could see the different sizes that are related to that type. This is going to be critical to being able to make this work for yourself. You have to have a table that has every individual option listed out. And then when you want to see the things that fall under that category, you need to put that entire category together. You need to put all the alcoholic beverages together, all the coffee beverages together, all the flavored beverages together. So that at that point, you can say, look at all the alcoholic beverages, show that list of possible options. And then when you get an option like, uh, you know, let's say Coca-Cola, for example, you need to have all of your Coca-Colas grouped together so that you can see the list of possible sizes within that brand. So we've created our little tables here. And what I'll do first is I'll go to cell J2 and put in a very simple drop-down menu. The simple drop-down menu, if I go to my data validation tab at the top of the screen, and click on the drop down menu where it says any value, I'm going to specify that the possible values fall within a list. Now, at this point, you might not notice this, but uh, this little guy over here on the left, I've actually created as a table, uh, a named table. So I could refer to this using the indirect function, and there are other videos out there that you'll see that uh, I recommend doing that. But for right now, let's keep it very simple. I'll go here to my source box and simply highlight everything from cell A2 down to cell A7, all the different beverage types, and click OK. And as you can see, my drop-down menu has those options on it. Very simple, very straightforward. Once I choose something like juice, for example, I should be able to see that there are three different types of juices. Now, how am I going to get the beverage brand drop-down menu to specifically go down to where the juices are and list out apple juice, lemonade, and strawberry lemonade? Or when I switch this back to alcoholic, for example, how am I going to get it to go to the alcoholic options and then drop in all of the different brands that fall under that alcoholic umbrella? The way I do this is with a function called offset. Offset takes five different values in. The five values are where should I start from? How far down should I go? How far to the right should I go? How tall should I be? And how wide should I be? 
So let's try this out. I'm going to go to cell K2 here. Go to my data tab at the top of the screen and click on data validation. And again, just as before, we hit the drop down menu where it says any value and say allow a list of values. And this is where we put in the offset function. As you can see, I've typed in my equal sign there. I've typed in the offset function. I went all caps because it helps me see things a little bit better, um, but the capitalization is non essential. Okay, so I know based off of what we've got so far that the types of beverages start in cell C2, but the brands start in cell D2. So where I want my list to start is cell D2, right there. That's the first possible brand that's going to go into the beverage brand drop-down menu. And after the comma, now I have to specify how to get to everything from Blue Moon down to Yingling and how to change this so that when I switch from alcoholic to coffee, it goes down to cold brew chocolate mocha to iced vanilla cappuccino. So how do I make that happen? Well, the first thing I'm going to do is use the match function because what I need to do is tell it how far down to go. I'm going to tell it to go down until it finds the first beverage that is alcoholic. So that is the match function. And then we tell it that we're looking for a specific type of value. And that value is what's in cell J2 right here. So if you can find a match for cell J2 someplace, that'll tell you how far down to go. So after the comma, we say that you could find the word alcoholic somewhere between cell C2 and cell C49, right there. Comma zero, because that's how you tell the match function to be an exact match. So then I close the parentheses. Now at this point, there is a really, really important step that you need to not skip over. If you've told your offset function to start in cell D2 and you've chosen alcoholic, you definitely don't want it to slide down any. But the match function, what it's going to do right now is tell you that the match for alcoholic is in the first position. It's going to return the number one. That's going to tell the offset function to slide down by one. I don't want that. So here I do a little minus one, which will just clean this up so that it's guaranteed to start at the right location. Now, comma, how far to the right should I go from cell D2? You should not move from to the right from cell D2. So I'm going to type in the number zero and then a comma. Now it asks the question, how tall should this selection be? Well, it's fairly simple. You should be as tall as all the alcoholic beverages, right? So if you know how many alcoholic type of beverages there are in this table, then you should be able to count those and spit those into the offset function. So we're going to use the count if function and the count if function says, uh, tell me where the cells are. The cells are once again in cells C2 through C49. And secondly, tell me what I'm supposed to be looking for. You're supposed to be looking for the beverage type in cell J2, which just so happens to be set to alcoholic. So if you do that, if you go looking for alcoholic and count that up, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. You should be nine cells tall comma, how wide should I be? One column wide. And that's that. What that's doing is saying if we start at cell D2, if we find alcoholic in the first position, we shouldn't move down at all, and we should just be as tall as we need to be to, to match up with all the alcoholic beverages. This count if function right here, this is precisely why, if you notice here, I've sorted by type. All the alcoholic beverages are together, all the coffee beverages together, all the flavored beverages are together. Because of that, it can easily go in, count the number of items, and have the full height. So I click OK, and as you can see on my drop-down menu, Blue Moon down to Yingling. And if I change my beverage type to coffee, I have my brands from cold brew chocolate mocha down to iced vanilla cappuccino. Or if I switch over to flavored, 
I now have Gatorade down to vitamin water. So I'll go ahead and choose Gatorade here. So now that I've chosen Gatorade, I see here that I have my Gatorades in the third table sorted together. So I have a 20 ounce and a 32 ounce option right here. Again, I'll go to cell L2, go to the data tab at the top of the screen and click on data validation and choose to allow a list of possible entries. And again, we start off with the offset function. Now remember, the offset function takes five values. The first should be, what is the top of this column? Top of this column is cell G20 right there, excuse me, G2 right there, excuse me. Now comma, how many cells should we go down? The match function will figure out where Gatorade is in this list, so we're going to use the match function putting in the thing to be matched, which is the value for cell K2, Gatorade, and where those cells might be, which is cells F2 down to F80, comma zero to find an exact match. Now there's a problem here. Cell K2 might say seven up, right? So the beverage brand might be seven up. If it is seven up, the match function would say, well, 7up is in the first position, so it would tell us to go down one cell. That would be a bad thing. So I always have to go to the match function here and do a little minus one, just to make sure that it's always going down to the top of the list and not one step farther down. All right, now with a comma, I can put in how many columns to the right to or left to move, which is zero. And with a comma, I can tell it how many entries there are for Gatorade. So that is the count if function. Looking in cells F2 down to cell F80 for a match for Gatorade, cell K2. So if you can tell me how many Gatorades there are, two, that'll tell me how tall the list should be. It should be two entries tall, comma, one column wide because I only include the sizes here. Close parentheses. And when I hit OK, you can see here the drop down menu includes the 20 ounce and the 32 ounce varieties of Gatorade. So let's go back to the drop down menu here. Choose water. From water, I can choose the different types of water, including Aquafina. And I can see there are two different sizes of Aquafina one liter and 20 ouncer. And so when I hit the drop down menu here, I see one liter and 20 ounce. And that's that.